So if you are a follower of my channel, you've undoubtedly heard us talk about franchise ease, franchisors, whether that's with Bo Eckstein, uh, the uh, concierge to small business lending. You've heard us talk about Cody Sanchez and many others. I actually had somebody reach out to me and say, hey, I am a franchisor. Why don't we talk about that? Why don't we talk about franchisees? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I know nothing about this market. Uh, so I'm going to ask a bunch of probably really silly questions. But uh, let's welcome Aaron to the show. How you doing, Aaron? Hey, I'm great. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate you having me on. Well, thank you for reaching out. Uh, I always like to dig into new topics, especially in areas I have very, very little experience. So thank you for reaching out. And uh, why don't you start with your story? Because it, it kind of starts like a lot of my audience. You were a W-2 employee, individual contributor. And then at some point, you took a right turn. Uh, so we'll get to the right turn in a minute. But uh, let's let's uh, start with the beginning. Sure. Uh, so grew up in California. I know you're out you're out there in Southern California. Um, went to college at UC Santa Barbara, then moved to Los Angeles after college to work in the film and television industry on the business side. Um, decided after five years or so of that that I wasn't uh, was that wasn't going to be my path long term. Um, and uh, had a buddy who worked in franchising and told me I should get into franchise development. I thought franchising was McDonald's, so I didn't know what franchise development was. Uh, but he told me about kind of this whole sector of franchising that's home service based and you can buy in for, you know, relatively inexpensive and it's not a million dollars and all that kind of stuff. I yeah. uh, loved the idea. So jumped from Hollywood to carpet cleaning at a carpet cleaning franchise. Okay. Uh, did franchise development there, which franchise development for those who are listening is basically franchise sales. So someone wants to buy a franchise, they come to me and I kind of give them the path to do that. Um, okay. Got into uh, another brand after that called uh, the Patch Boys, which was a drywall repair brand. Okay. That brand basically needed uh, complete restructuring. Um, it was uh, needed systems and support and everything that it didn't have. So we did that. And then in two years, I added 223 locations to that brand across the country mm. as kind of the individual contributor W2 role that you told okay. me about. Uh, saw uh, a lot in the franchise industry and realized that there was a better way to do it than what I had seen mm. um, and decided I was going to go out on my own. This was at the end of 2022. I looked at a bunch of businesses that I could franchise, so good core residential and commercial service businesses. Met the founders of Rolling Suds, which is a 33-year-old residential and commercial power washing business mm -hmm. at the end of 2022. Raised capital, acquired the franchise rights in January of 23, mm -hmm. started franchising at the end of February of 23, and now we have 117 locations in 24 states across the country. Wow. And um, we, we're growing and I have a big team of 17 people that support franchisees. Wow. And so I went from individual contributor W2 to CEO and founder of 117 unit wow. uh, franchise system. That's cool. So let's, let's break this down again. Um, so franchise development, is is that kind of simply said like process and procedures kind of documenting? Ba basically, your your job as franchise development is to do what you can to increase the success rate. Is that no, kind so, of fair? Fr or no? So franchise development would be like a franchise salesperson. So someone oh, okay. goes to, let's say, a broker or goes online and says, I'm looking for franchises under $150,000 uh, cash needed. What franchises are available? Got I it. would be one of those franchises they would talk to. And then I would take them through what we call the discovery process for them to learn about the brand and determine whether or not it's a mutual fit. So that's okay. franchise sales, franchise development. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll call it salesperson for, you know, simple terms. Fair. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, so your job at that point is to find interested parties, take them through the buying process, qualifications, due diligence, all of that. And so at the so what happens after you, I don't know, close someone, sell someone, whatever the right vocabulary is, who takes over at that point? 
So the operations team takes over, uh, onboards them. They be, they they kind of get them ready for launching their business. There's systems and support in place that allow franchisees to skip a bunch of having to figure that stuff out on their own. And when I was in the last role as an individual contributor, I also had a lot of, uh, I had a big role in helping reshape infrastructure for a brand, um, basically did a full turnaround of a brand. And so right. I knew how to do that. And then I also knew how to kind of like find the right franchisees and sell them a franchise or we call it awarding a franchise in the franchise mm -hmm. industry, but you get the okay. idea. Um, yeah, that's cool. So, yeah. All right. So um, this is, a, this is very cool. So the other thing you've talked about, which again, Bo Eckstein, who, who's on the channel is a small business lender. He really has highlighted home service business, which is interesting because that's, you've highlighted three of those. Uh, with Rolling Suds being the one you're you 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 own now, um, the CEO of. Why why should people look at home services? Obviously, I think you've already said the entry point is much lower. I think a lot of people think franchise and it's seven figure McDonald's or whatever. Why why home servicing? I I think it's wonderful. Uh, I have an idea, but I wanted to go to you first. Why home services? So I, I'm of the belief based on what I've seen is that the more fragmented the industry is, the easier it is to disrupt. Oh, and okay. um, home services traditionally has been very owner operator based. You kind of go out, you're the one that's doing the power washing or the carpet cleaning or the drywall repair. We're bringing in sophisticated business owners who have either exited businesses, they were CEOs of companies, they come from private equity backgrounds, and they're stepping into a service-based business that's relatively simple mm -hmm. comparatively to what they've done in the past, right? And um, and so we can do that at scale. We can basically sophisticate uh, and elevate an industry, um, which at scale hasn't been done yet. I mean, we, we you've seen private equity step into like HVAC as a perfect example of this or plumbing, right? Like a bunch of institutional capital going towards home service businesses for the same reason that franchisees flock to home service businesses is like, oh, power washing is spraying soap and water on the side of a building and then rinsing mm -hmm. it off. <laughs> I just raised 50 million in series D funding for a startup. Not, right. you know, a lot, a lot easier. And I can own the whole business instead right. of having a small percentage of the management cap table at this startup that, right. right so right. it's, oh, that, that's okay. kind of some of the reasons. Oh, no, I like it. And the other thing, when I think home services, the first thing that jumped out to me is it kind of feels recession proof. Now, obviously, you probably have ups and downs and, and all of that. But when you get into the right home services, it really does have some foundational recession resiliency, at least I would think. Yeah, I mean, and what you saw with the pandemic is you also saw pandemic Proof, right. And so since yeah. 2020, home services has even even kind of taken a, a huge jump because during a global pandemic, people were spending a lot of money on their homes because they were stuck. Yeah. At they home. were stuck at home. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's where yeah. their money was going. No, exactly. Exactly. So kind of break the other thing that I look at this. So let's talk about rolling suds. Um, obviously, like. When somebody it gets awarded a franchise, I'm going to guess that's like a territory or a zip code or a city or what, however you do that. But they're also probably have to do some capital purchases, I'm guessing. I don't know if it's a truck or equipment or what. what what's kind of like the what is like the raw material? Because there's the labor component. Sure. There's the service and the marketing. But there's also some physical equipment, I'm guessing. What's that yeah. look like? Yeah, sure. So at Rolling Suds, we basically have a process that nobody else, no other power washers have. Like we can do a 3000 square foot house, 25 minutes, start to finish. Oh we God. can power wash five stories from the ground. Um, and we wow. manufacture five stories minutes. from the ground. That's pretty it's awesome. wild. That's it's wild. wild. Yeah. It's okay. insane. So 3000 square foot house, 25 minutes. That's a $500 job typically. So we can do that with the equipment that we have. So we've got 16 foot box trucks. They carry about a thousand gallons of liquid on every truck, thousand uh, feet of hose. There's two guys on every truck. I mean, it's a pretty big piece of machinery. Sure. Yeah. So we, we source the trucks, we build the trucks, we deliver them anywhere in the country uh, for mm. franchisees. 
Um, and yeah, so they they buy trucks and then they basically can open as many trucks as they want within mm. a geographical area. And I'm gonna guess these trucks. I, I don't know how to say this without sound. It's not they're not cheap, right? I mean, again, again a truck that's <laughs> built and it reinforced and holds the water and all the inch. That's you know, is that is that a six figure truck or what is that? It is. Yeah, the trucks yeah. are like one hundred and thirty five thousand dollars. I, I would think. Yeah, I would think. Yeah. Now yeah. we we have financing resources to finance it, but yeah, that's the overall cost of the truck. No, I mean, and and most franchises, I'm guessing, start with one, or do they both? Do they ever get? They start one? with one. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so they start with one truck, but they'll buy multiple territories. So we're looking for people who have empire building mentalities they mm -hmm. you know a million dollar business is just a starting point they're going to continue to move the goalposts no matter what so mm -hmm. everyone starts with one truck and at least two territories which is a pretty big geographical population it's half a million people mm -hmm. and then most of our franchisees have purchased three territories which mm -hmm. is seven hundred fifty thousand people um okay makes sense all right so the other thing that again i i've run teams i've managed folks mainly on the sales side so that all makes sense to me but when you're on the delivery side so again two two people per truck i think i heard you say that yep what correct. what is a what does kind of a head count look like for a, a you know somebody coming in so they get a truck they obviously have at least two providers are most people coming into this like they're riding in the truck in the beginning or they're not doing it. no so so actually if someone comes to me and is like aaron i really want to power wash buildings like with my son and do this like it's, this isn't the franchise for them. Like we're, okay. we help them recruit kind of a general manager in training before they go to, mm. before they go to training. And then oh, they okay. hire someone underneath him. And those two people will run the truck so that the franchisee can focus on business development efforts. And we're majority commercial business, which is kind of unique in uh, mm. people think that it's just houses. When you think of power washing, mm -hmm. we've power washed, casinos and water towers and shopping centers and you know college campuses and so we're really big on the commercial side which is obviously higher ticket items less customers sure. higher margins um and so the franchisees the best use of the franchisees time is to be on the proverbial golf course with the person who manages a 500 unit property right. management company or a real estate agent who has a portfolio that person doesn't want to rebid power washing Mm. every single time right. that they need their units power washed. So makes that's, I thought it was really cool based on your audience and like what mm -hmm. we do, like there's a, a ton of crossover. No, I, I think it makes total sense. Uh, and that, that's, um, I think that's right where a lot of my audience is, right? They want to be the, they're not in the doing phase, right? A lot of right. folks who watch my channel based on the analytics or, or north of 40, uh, probably, you know, higher than average net worth and, and, and right. looking to do that. So I think that's, that makes total sense to me. Um, what does your avatar look like? Like if you, what is somebody that, cause we've already talked to, Hey, if you're going to be an owner operator, not your boy makes sense to me. What does the avatar look like? Who, who, who's like, somebody's like, yeah, you should, you should really look at rolling suds. So I'll just talk about some of the people who have signed up. So we've signed up 38 franchisees now. Um, some of them have exited businesses. They have other businesses that are on autopilot essentially, and they're working this into their existing infrastructure. We've brought in multiple C-level executive CFOs, COOs, two CEOs who have left a job where they're making mm -hmm. 500 grand a year to come build this business full time. We've brought in multiple guys coming from a private equity background. We've brought in women who had a commercial real estate portfolio and exited. We've brought in people who have raised twenty million dollar funds. We've got brought in people who have uh, prepared startups for exits. Like we've we're talking to a professional baseball player right now. Like we have a very high standard. I mean, I've turned away forty seven people who mm. wanted to write me a two hundred thousand dollar check, and we're not right for our system. Uh, so we have a very high kind of uh, caliber individuals that are coming in. All right. So you look so a high hurdle rate, right? You don't just say yeah. yes to everybody that reaches out to you, which keeps the right. quality uh, and really probably increases your chances of success, I'm guessing, because the right. last thing you want is a franchisee struggling and spreading, you know, bad, bad stuff, I'm guessing. 
I can't be successful without successful franchisees. And a lot of franchisors will just sell to anyone who will write them a check. Right. I raised a significant amount of capital from so that I didn't have to take money from the wrong people. Mm -hmm. I talk a lot about responsible franchising uh, publicly on any of my social media channels and stuff like that. I believe that setting the right expectations, making sure franchisees have the right amount of capital, making sure we bring in the right people, um, and then only selling the number of units that you could feasibly open. So sustainable growth. Those to me are the four core tenets of responsible franchising. And, um, and, and, and that's something that's really important to me uh, because it's a big deal. I mean, these people are investing like a lot of money on their own time in growing this business. And we take that very seriously at Rolling Suns. Yeah. I think one of the things that goes unsaid, uh, not only the capital, but, you know, if you're talking this kind of caliber of folks, it's the opportunity cost, sure. right? Because they, they, when you're in that situation, I don't know how this will play with the audience, but it's really the opportunity cost that's more important than the money, right? If you've had a seven yeah. figure exit, you know, writing a 200K check is, I mean, I'm sure you feel it, but it's, it's, it's not going to kill you. But correct. when you, when you deploy 40 hours of your free time on something, you're not doing that anywhere else. So exactly. it's the opportunity cost, I think, that these franchisees are looking at and, and probably trying to answer for themselves. Like, is this really what I want to do for the next decade? Does that make right. sense? It makes perfect sense. And they're going to dedicate full time to growing this. So they have a ton of options where they could yeah. allocate. They capital. got a lot of choices, man. They got a lot of choices. Yeah. They, <laughs> they have a lot of choices. And, and we don't have a ton of data, right? Like we're, we, we launched our first franchisee in June of 2023. And so it's a huge leap of faith for someone to come in. Now, personally, I handle every single interaction mm -hmm. of someone and I'm selecting, hand selecting and interviewing, and they're interviewing me on the front lines here. And I made the commitment to hand select the first hundred locations myself because when you buy into an emerging brand, you're not buying three years of data to say, if I invest this money, I might have this reasonable amount of return. You're buying into the leadership team. I have 17 employees, like our ability to execute and then the owner's ability to execute. And then so and we take it really seriously. I mean, an emerging brand is not for everyone. Yeah. So I, I, I'd love to break down the money because, again, I know nothing about the, this whole model. Yeah. So obviously a franchise or you, there's a check up front when somebody gets sure. awarded. It makes total sense to me. Um, is there like a quarterly or yearly re-up or fee or, or is it a one-time thing? I, I have no idea how this stuff works. Yeah. So franchisors are paid a royalty and that royalty is oh, okay. either paid on a weekly basis or a monthly basis typically. Okay. It is a percent of revenue. Um, percent of and gross, then there are other fees. Gross? What's that? Gross or, of gross, gross revenue. Or net? Yep. Gross. Okay. Gross. Got it. Yep. Gross okay. revenue. Um, and so uh, franchise royalties could be anywhere from five to 13% in that range, okay. depending I on. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And okay. um, so our royalty on an ongoing basis is 8% of gross revenue. And then franchisees contribute a 2% brand fund that goes towards national advertising, which becomes really meaningful when we have a $200 million system and we're able mm -hmm. to allocate $4 million a year towards radios, commercials, billboards, whatever it is that we have. Now, my goal is to become the biggest power washing company in the world. Mm -hmm. um, we will be there by next year as long as we continue on this growth rate uh, mm -hmm. from a revenue um, standpoint. I don't. So, I have no. I, do you know? Do you know who the biggest power washing company is today? I I have no idea. No clue. I do, and their revenue is about nine million. Oh, um, all right. So yeah. So cool. they're okay. They're actually. It's a pretty fragmented industry. There's very few sophisticated players, um, which right. was one so of the things. I, that I really wanna, what what is me. an average job? So you already said a home is five hundred bucks, but I'm gonna guess that's not average. That is average for a home on the residential right. side. But what's for an us, based job? upon our, yeah. Oh, an average type of job. No, like, like when you when you're talking to a franchisee, you're like, you've got to paint a vision about what an average invoice is going to look like. I'm going to yep. guess 500 is the low end, but. It's so on the commercial side, it's five thousand seven hundred and eighty-two dollars is our average. Oh, so we have average for residential and average for commercial. 
Um, and the what's the breakdown of commercial majority of your business commercial? 54% commercial, oh, 46% residential. So if it was half, mm -hmm. I would take 5,400. Let's just call it, so what would that be? Six grand divided by two. So I'm just trying to do the math on 9 million. That, that's all I'm so. Let's say the average oh, job gotcha. is three grand. I just don't know how many jobs that is. Divided by three grand. Is that right? So that's 3,000 jobs. So the, the biggest one is doing 3,000 jobs a year at a $3,000 average price divided by 365. So that's like eight jobs. That's like roughly eight jobs a day. Right. So you have multiple trucks and yeah, our franchisees are all scaling to multiple trucks. Now, the cool thing about franchising is each franchisee buys a bit. That's their business. Like right. I, they pay us a royalty for the support, but like it's their business. They can have as many trucks. They can sell that business. Mm -hmm. They can. I mean, there's it's, yeah, it's yeah. literally their business. So when you add, let's say you've got a franchisee in, you know, Austin, who's doing 3 million and you've got a franchisee in Atlanta doing 4 million and you've got, and all of a sudden you've got all these franchisees, like that's how you get to hundred million or 200 million mm -hmm. is you've got a bunch of franchisees that are building yeah. their business. Yeah, no, I think it makes total. And this really goes back to the earlier point about our home services. Uh, there's not, a, there's not many industries where the top dog only does 9 million. Right. <laughs> not, <laughs> you know, the top dog was at 9 million. It's like, that's, yeah. That's that just screams fragmentation, and it, it makes total sense why uh, a lot of smart people like yourself are going into this because um, it's easy to shoot at somebody only doing nine million. <laughs> it's not nine billion. That's a different story, <laughs> right? And with power washing, like literally every building or structure that you drive by is a potential customer, so the total addressable market is like massive. And the majority of the industry is the guy who power washes with his truck and which is fine. He's making six figures a year working yeah. seven months out of the year. But yeah. like, you know, if that guy can do that, think about, you know, the people that I'm bringing in or me or, you know, what we can yeah. do in this type of industry. Well, the so other thing about power washing to me is it's almost like uh, it's buildings get dirty. They just right. do it's kind of yeah. weather and dust and, and all of that. So, if you do this right, you know, as a franchise E, you should be going in for not the single jobs, but the repeat business, get them on a schedule. And that's exactly where our focus is. So we have inbound and outbound marketing companies that generate leads for franchisees and they pay yeah, those marketing companies. And I mean, we've gotten franchisees like recurring Taco Bell contracts, recurring Dave and Buster yeah. contracts, recurring warehouse spaces. Like when you get enough of those and now you've just got trucks that are just operating. And at that point, it's basically account management at some point. Yeah, no, it makes total sense to me, right? If I, if I was running something like this, uh, I would probably have two sales guys on it, at least to start. Uh, I call them hunters and farmers. Yep. Right. You know, uh, they're very different skill sets and, and all yep. of that, but, and I would reward them differently, but yeah, it would be, I mean, just doing the rough math in, in a territory of 250,000, you buy two or three kind of connected. It's like, you know, shoot, I'd be trying to do 9 million myself. Right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, that's a hundred thousand yeah. households per territory. You get just yeah. a small percentage of market share of that and you clean it annually. That's just the residential side. That doesn't include commercial. I mean, you could build right. a big business for sure. No, it makes it makes total sense for me. What am I missing? Because it's just, I like the framework. I think home services, both you and Bo, are, are really telling you know my audience to look there, look there. Fragmentation makes total sense. Um, what haven't I asked, or what what um, yeah, what haven't I asked? I mean, a lot of the franchises out there. I think franchising just in general gets a bit of a bad name, at least in mm. my experience, when I talk to people, they typically think of franchising. If they're not within the industry. They either hear it's McDonald's and Chick-fil-A and I mm. don't know any other side of it. Or I don't think you should buy a franchise. My uncle had a franchise and he got ripped off or, you know, <laughs> I've heard about Subway or yeah. like the fees are too high or you're buying a job or you have no control. And while there are a lot of bad actors in the industry who don't provide the support necessary, 
Uh, I don't believe that like if you find the right brand who cares about your success as much as you do or more than you do, um, I don't believe there's a quicker path to wealth generation. And so mm. like if you think about like Orange Theory Fitness franchisees that might have gotten in at the beginning, like they're probably coasting with like seven to 15 units that are just like, you know, each mm. doing two to four million dollars a year. And like it's because they got in first or like you go back even farther to the 1-800-GOT-JUNK franchisees in the mm, 90s. Yeah. yeah. Like there okay. was no leader in junk back in the 90s. And then they came in and they had a wrapped vehicle and they had a better mousetrap. Yep. And like there are franchisees and then like they paved the way for college hunks hauling junk and junk king and yep. junk luggers. But like yep. all those brands that I just mentioned combined, 1-800-GOT-JUNK is bigger than all of them. Oh, yeah. First, first mover. First, first mover, yeah. Um, First mover. And we have that with rolling suds. We are nice. doing to the power washing industry what, what 800 got junked into the junk business in the 90s right now. I and like uh, and so it's a killer opportunity, but you have to find the right brand. And yeah. and that's that's the most important thing. So if we've uh, if we've sparked some folks' interest in rolling suds, uh, where should we send them to just dig in more? I don't know, reach out for a phone call or where, where do we send them if somebody looks at this like, hey, you know, Michael clearly doesn't know what he's talking about with franchisees. I want to ask harder questions. Uh, how would they do that? Uh, so rollingsudsfranchise.com. You can hit schedule a call for him right on there. Um, or if you just want to follow along on the journey, I put content out every single day um, nice. about how we're building this company on uh, Twitter. Um, my my handle's Aaron Harper, CEO. Um, LinkedIn. Wow. Instagram's Aaron T. Harper, and I'm just putting it out content regularly on Good how to you. properly fran franchise a business and what we're doing at Rolling Suds and all that kind of stuff, just to be as helpful as possible. Oh, I like it, man. I love that. Putting out content, watching the, watching, maintaining the airplane while it's going. I think that's very brave of you, and it's the right thing to do. One more time, what's the website? Uh, RollingSudsFranchise.com. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for doing this. A lot of fun. I learned a lot of stuff. Uh, and again, I think you're right. Home services is where to go and going after a $9 million big dog. That's, that's very doable. <laughs> so good for you. Smart man. Thank you. Thank big you. Dog. I appreciate it.